Hi everyone, this is Noah. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to make a video about how to be most effective on the map Dead Dog Saloon. This map is a newer map from Dead by Daylight and it's one of my favorites. I love how the western feels with the vultures and all of the new structures but I think it gives a lot of people some issues since it's got a ton of new things and there's not many of the normal tiles that we're used to seeing. So I wanted to make this guide hopefully to be helpful now that the map has been out for a little while and people are just kind of settled into it. How can we take our play to the next level? And hopefully this will be beneficial to some people. So let's get into the video and we'll check out the map. Test. Okay, so what we have right here is an overhead view of the map Dead Dog Saloon. It's a pretty small map, but I think one of the first things to notice walking in is how the map is laid out and how the generators are laid out. So, like all of Dead by Daylight maps, there is a lot of random generation that there is no way to predict exactly what the map looks like. So I've just played a bunch of games and I drew this as what could be a possible generation of the map. Um, there are some consistencies with it, I'll point them out, but then some of these things are just random and there's no way to get around it. So what is consistent? This is the main building and this is just a really rough outline of what this main building is. We're going to look closer at it later. But this main building will always be right here. The shack will always be right here. And this little structure here, which is some gallows where people are hung, this will always be right here. So these things will, pretty, will always be in the same spot. The other things, like there's a water tower over here, that will always be there. These little houses right here, they'll always be here, but the way that they're connected and set up changes. Sometimes there's a porch right here that you can walk through. Sometimes there's not. These rooms over these buildings over here. Sometimes you can climb up on this one. Sometimes you just have to walk around. Sometimes this is this one. They change every time. So what I've done, like I said, is this is just a general idea of what it could look like. So I think the important thing when you spawn in is think about where you spawn. I've seen two ways to approach this map. Most people classify this side right here as the top of the map. So they use the main building as the top and this one as the bottom. Now, for some reason in my brain, I've never been able to figure that out. It just, naturally, it doesn't make sense to me. So I consider this to be the top of the map and this to be the bottom of the map. Right down here is the bottom. The only reason I do that is there's this huge road that goes right through the middle. And then there's a road that goes like this, kind of makes a T shape. And for some reason, this road just naturally forces my brain to think that this should be a cross section of a map. So I always refer to this as the top, but like I've said in a past video, figure out what works well for you and your team if you got a team that's playing it, and just lock into that. Definitely don't try and change things up if y'all have a system that works, but I consider this to be the top of the map and this to be the bottom of the map. Okay, so you spawn in, first thing to do, where are you on the map? Figure out which location are you in. Most common spawns I see are down here, over here, over here. Those are the, seem to be the three most common spawns, sometimes down here. For some reason, it seems like a lot of times people spawn in the corners of the map. That's not a guarantee, but that's a lot of times where I've seen I spawn. So figure out where you spawn, and then start to consider generators. Now, what I will say, one thing about this map is generators typically spawn very close, and so you really have to work to break the three gen. A good killer is gonna try and force you into the three gen on this map because it is deadly. Um, I've thrown some random generators from what I've seen a lot of times, so I want you to look right here. That's a super close area right here. This is a really close area. The only benefit 
to this one is this gym right here is on a second floor of the main building. And so if the killer isn't nurse or death slinger or huntress or maybe or spirit, somebody who can either blink upstairs, shoot upstairs, or get up there really fast, this generator is a little safer. And so I would try and leave that map a little bit. But either way, you got two pretty strong three gens that you're gonna have to fight for. And so figure out where you spawn and really you need to figure out where are the generators in your zones. So I'll typically break the map into three zones like this in my brain. Um, and I'll figure out how many gens are in each zone. And then you want to start and really attack the gens towards the middle. The only thing I'll say is I would leave this main generator alone. That's a really great gen to do as like your fourth generator done. It's typically not the last one but it's a great gen to do it for because it's going to probably set you up well to finish the game. The problem is if you're solo queuing or duoing, your random teammates are going to love to do that gen. So you're just going to have to accept it's going to get done. But I'm trying to focus this video at a more competitive level or a little bit higher skilled level. So I'm just telling you kind of things to think about. This is a great gen to lead. Now, if for some reason the killer is just getting looped in this area and somehow your teammate is just destroying them, then yeah, you gotta do the gens. You don't want her to sit around, but at least be thinking about that. So figure out where your gens are at least quickly. You don't need to waste a bunch of time going over the whole map. But if you can spread out and you can say, okay, you got three gens down here, one gen up here and three over here, calling it out to your team, then you know, all right, let's pressure this one first and maybe this one back here. Let's, let's try and get those two gens done. And then slowly but surely, maybe do this one and this one. That, that, would, be, that would be godly. That's never going to happen. But if you could get that kind of split, I mean, that's the easiest win you'll have in this game. Let's get rid of these circles. So learn the gens and just really know in your head on this map, you're going to have to work hard because this is an easy map for the killer to patrol. Another next thing I want to get into about this map is safety or pallets or looping. Now, I want you to kind of look. I have these little orange marks right here. Orange marks are pallets. But what this map is infamous for is really, really terrible loops. Every loop down here in this bottom, this one, this one, this one, these two right here, well, except for this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, this one, this one, this one, both of these, this one really. All of these loops are unsafe and are very easily mind gamed by the killer. What I mean by easily mind game is not just like they can read you and get a good play, but literally if you throw this pallet down at this one, you will not get away without taking a hit unless you have sprint burst on command. It's a terrible pallet. And so one thing to start knowing about this map is there are a lot of really bad areas to try and survive in. In fact, what I would say is this whole bottom area right here is really not good to loop the killer in. You will go down quickly. And so it's a death zone. So what you really want to do is focus this area if you can. If you can get this gen done, this, these gens done, and you can kind of leave this behind, this top area up here is much safer and it's actually a pretty good loop, this whole area up here. You can run like this whole entire upper section of the map as a loop. It's really powerful. All right, let's look at some of these tiles real quick, just overlaying them. So I'll look at the shack real quick. Now, you know the shack. The shack is one of the few tiles that are coming over from past maps that are the same for the most part. There is one note to look at the shack, and that's this green, this green mark I've made right here on the map. And that is a breakable door. Now that door is never on any of the other shacks, and so if that door is broken by a killer, that makes it much easier for them to loop you. So this shack, you kind of want to approach it a little differently. Um, there's a couple ways of looping it in towards the shack running all the way through, but if this door is broken, 
you're going to have to kind of get creative with how you're going to use it. And you're probably going to want to try and tie it more into um, like running around this building here and back into the window or running down here. You're going to have to get a little more creative with it because this, this door right here makes this loop a lot less safe, which is fun because a lot of times people make Shack pretty mindless. Just wanted to point this out. Now the gallows here, this is a two-story structure. So this gen right here is on a top floor. And what you got is a window right here that you can vault over. This window is really unsafe, but sometimes you can throw people off because not a lot of killers know about it for some reason. So you can get them to come up the steps right here, and then you can hop right off. And I've even had killers vault after me. And then you go over to this, this little loop right here. This is a pretty good little tile. You can run around it for a little bit and then throw it down. That's the gallows. Like I've said down here, all of these loops are terrible. There's nothing to do with them. You're just going to run around, try and get a stun. If you can get a stun, that's your best case scenario. Otherwise, you might as well just take your hit and run on off. This loop up here at this water tower thing is actually pretty good. Um, you can see through the whole thing. And so you can really make sure you get a lot of use out of running around this. And also, this distance in between is not that far. And so a lot of times you can even get to run around this and then through the window. That's a pretty nice little chain. Like I said, the key to this map is chaining stuff together. This right here is a regular t l wall. It's just got an extension right here making the T-wall super, super long. Now there's a breakable wall which literally turns this into a t l wall. Um, but a lot of killers won't break that. It's just a waste of time. So you can run this like a TNL wall and you can try and run around and loop through all the windows. This right here, this one is a second story vault. So your best case right here is if you're coming from shack, you just want to run right up and vault this window. Make sure the killer is actually following you or else they're just going to walk around and hit you. But that's not a bad loop. You can do that and then you can run over to the L wall or something like that. This tile is really new. It's got two win or two breakable walls, a window right here, and then a, usually a pallet over here. And it's super easy to get this fast vault. You can pretty much treat this like a long wall running right through here. There's another cool tile on this map which has like a, a long corridor like this with a window at the end, and then it has a little shape like this and a window at the bottom. That's a pretty cool loop, but there's a bunch of breakable walls that the killer can make. But that's also a fun one to learn. That's a real flash look at the map. Just try and really think about how you can keep moving to the next tile because a lot of these have a lot of breakable walls. And so if the killer spends time there, they're going to weaken the loop. And so you want to be able to just move around, hit this window a couple times, and then you got the killer on this side. You run on off to this L wall, and then you keep on doing it. Then you run from the L wall to the water tower. You loop that. Then you come right over here and vault out this thing. Maybe you take a hit right there. Then you run on down, run around here, run into the shack. You know what I mean? You just keep tying it all together. And that's how you're going to make this map really powerful. Well, really powerful. It's an overstatement. That's how you're going to survive on this map. Let's check out the main building real quick because the main building is pretty cool and it's got a couple of tricks that some people don't know when they're new to the game. Alright, let's finish off by looking at the main building on this map. The main building on this map is really big, it's a huge saloon, it's got this cool piano that's playing in it, and so it's a really unique building, I love it. It's got two floors, it's got a top floor right here, and then it's got a bottom floor. What's these big openings right here? These are the main entrances. So this is a huge door that you can walk in right there. And then this is like a double staircase where you can walk in to go upstairs. The downstairs, the main loop right here is this window. I don't think I've ever seen a killer break this door. So you can treat this window kind of like a, uh, like a long wall where you can come in and then you can vault. There's a little barrel right here. You can vault around the barrel and get a fast vault. Kind of treat it like a long wall. It's a really good loop. I love this little loop because for some reason it's just simple. Not a lot to it. You can run right through this main just back door and then run pop, out the window. It's a simple loop. It works. It's consistent. Other than that, you got this other vault right here. This thing is pretty much not worth your time because there's a staircase or, or there's a little opening right here that the killer is just going to walk out. So there's really no waste to it. 
And then back here, there's these little back rooms and stuff. You're not going to do much because the doors are blocked. So you're kind of stuck. One thing to note is sometimes there's a pallet right on the outside right here. That's pretty useful to know in case you're running through and you got to do that. But you want to make sure you know what the pallet's there. Because if it's not, then you're screwed. The top has a little more you can play with. So this is actually opening right here. So what you got is you got this window and then a breakable door. And you can come up from the outside and vault into the window. And then you can run around here. And, there, and this is open and then you can loop around. The main things to note about the top floor. One, do not vault into this room. This room has three breakable walls. And so if you come through this window, you will be dead. There's no way to get out of this room. It's a dead end. The reason I think that they made this is because before this was open and you could come through this window and pretty much make an infinite out of this loop right here. It was way too strong, but it's still kind of silly. I feel like they could have at least left maybe this door open. I don't know. Either way, if you go in this room, you're going to die unless the killer has already broken a door. If they have broken a door, well, then it's time to adapt and add this into the loop. But this is a pretty cool loop. There's a lot of space. You just need to know how far is the killer, what do you need to do. Keep in mind that there's no pallets up top, so you need to use the windows. One good window, because no killer really breaks this door, this is a pretty good window to just slow vault through. Um, if you're on the gym and you see them coming around, just hop out the window. It's going to be hard for them to come down there quickly, so you'll at least be able to scamper out and run off to something. That's really most of the main building. You can fall off on the sides, you can drop down this hole, but unless you have balanced landing, you're going to get staggered and they're going to catch up with you. So the main thing you want to learn is master this fast vault right here. That's an important fast vault to be able to hit every time um, so that the killer can't get you and master this fast vault coming back in. That's what's going to extend your chase because even if this door is blocked, I mean it opened, you're still going to get that window and really make some distance. So those are the main things. Don't come in this room. Uh, you can play around with the staircase and you can run through this window and down there's the staircase right here and then come out down here at the bottom hit this window. Learn to play it together. This map takes a lot of thought, a lot of on-the-fly adaption and so you want to be ready to make the most out of what you're given. Adapt. Remember there's a basement right here and so just figure out how can you do the most with this map. And that's pretty much it. All right, so that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to go into with this video. Um, I think this map has a lot of intricacies that I could spend a lot of time talking about if you were looking at which killer you're going against. Just for an example, like if you were facing a really good nurse, the top of the map where there's all of those little tiles that we looked at combined together is an amazing place to loop a nurse because there are countless line of sight blockers. I mean, it's really, really devastating for a nurse. Stuff like that, but then you gotta also consider if you're on the second floor gen, a nurse can blink up to you. So there's a lot of individual counterplay to this map that is just hard to predict until you know which kill you're going against. So I would just say, I love this map. I wanted to just kinda look at it from above Try and figure out how the map is broken down so that you can communicate well with your team. There's a lot of new generation in this map with totem spawns much more difficult to find. A little bit more sporadic generators in certain areas. And so being able to clearly communicate where stuff is happening is super crucial on this map. I hope that this was somewhat helpful just looking at the map as a whole. And maybe it will just give you a kind of clue into how you can better attack this map when you get stuck onto it. I know a lot of times we have a general idea of how to loop the normal maps like Azarov's and Macmillan and Coldwind, but some of these single maps that come out, we just don't really know exactly how to handle or what to do with them. So hopefully this can be help to you. If you had a question or something like that, leave it in the comments, but really the best way to communicate with me is by joining my Discord. It'll be the first link in the description. I really like using Discord. It's a super helpful tool, I think. So come on over and join that. I'm actually having fun making these guys. This is my second one I've made. And so I think it's a process I want to get better at. 
Um, I like the, the, the paint format. I think it's kind of silly, but it's also really practical. So hopefully it'll work out well. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Leave it a like. Give it maybe a subscribe or something. Let me know of another map I should look into, or maybe I should do just like a gameplay video or something like that. Either way, I really appreciate you watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.